Happy Sabbath. The scripture reading today is found in Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. You Shall you not know it? I will even make a world in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Well, if you were coming here today and expecting to get out at noon for lunch, <clears throat> you came on the wrong day. Um, unless I just said amen, amen. and we sang our closing hymn. But uh, um, our sermon today, Crazy Talk, I will try to go... <clears throat> as quickly as the spirit moves. So, um, let's have prayer. Sorry. Oh Lord, thank you for the blessings that you have blessed us with already today. Lord, thank you for your presence and Lord, thank you for your word, thank you for Cheryl Lynn taking a stand for you today. Thank you for our special music. Thank you for our children's story. Thank you for everyone that has participated so far today, Lord. May we continue to see you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Crazy talk. Some people thought I would use this story or this event that uh, took place just a few weeks ago um, in my No Fear sermon series, but it actually fit quite nicely uh, with this sermon. <clears throat> and that is, his name is Luke Akins, originally from Corpus Christi, Texas. I was thinking this week as I was reading more about his background, it would be somebody who was originally from Texas to do this. They're a little crazy anyway. Right? Right? And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I can say that in all honesty, being that I am related to Stephen F. Austin. So, you know, I, I come by that naturally. But, Luke Akins, on July 30, 2016, just a few weeks ago, would jump out of an airplane from 25,000 feet. He's a skydiver, and uh, he has taken 18,000 jumps from airplanes and helicopters and uh, off cliffs and everything, you know, for lots of things. But this particular jump, which would take two minutes, Fox Network would do an hour-long television special on it uh, called Heaven Sent. And uh, Luke, though, that day would jump out of the airplane with no parachute. Now, there have been people jump out of airplanes before with no parachutes. There have been people that have floated through the air and another person would float down and hand them a parachute and they would strap it on and, and then, then they would open the parachute and go on down to the earth. But this particular day, Luke Atkins wasn't just going to jump out of an airplane with no parachute, he was going to land with no parachute. Wow. And some people are like, oh, his wife... Two years ago, when some people came to him and said, Luke, we'd like you to jump out of an airplane without a parachute. He was like, you're crazy. Yeah. He's like, that's crazy talk. You know, they said, we want you to do it with no airplane, with, with, out of the airplane with no parachute and without one of those, um, one of those uh, 
apparatuses on them that, you know, that looks like the squirrel suit, the flying squirrel, you know, suit thing, you know, that we want you to do it without that too. He's like, you, you got to be crazy. Well, he went home, he started thinking about it, he talked to his wife about it, and uh, she's like, um, they want you to do what? Well, he decided that somebody jumping out of an airplane and landing without a parachute in a big net was going to be done at some point, and so why not be him? And so he started preparing for it. They started testing a net that was a third the size of a football field that would be 20 stories high, sort of like a fishing trawler net. And they started testing it with, uh, with 200 pound dummies and dropping them into the net. And uh, one of the dummies actually went all the way through the net, hit the ground. And uh, Luke looks over other people and goes, ah, no biggie, that's why we test. Oh, wow. Now Fox would uh, tape the broadcast on a tape delay and uh, they would run a little excerpt on the bottom that said, don't try this at home. Well, he would, on that day, jump out of the parachute, or jump out of the airplane. I keep saying parachute. He had no parachute. He'd jump out of the airplane, falling at 120 miles per hour, battling shifting winds, and after two minutes after jumping out of the airplane, landed in the net. Alive. Made it safely. I don't know. I know he made it safely. I know he did it. But even today, I still think he was crazy. Having somebody jump out of an airplane without a parachute, that was crazy talk. That is just pure craziness. And so today, we want to talk about some people that would be considered crazy. Crazy talk. A couple weeks ago, Pastor Isaac did a sermon and he mentioned the, the spies of, that came back and uh, they didn't want to do something different and they would go back into the wilderness. But I want to talk about the other spies this morning. And so in Numbers chapter 13, we find that Moses... That God comes to Moses and says, I want you to get 12 people together. I want you to send them into the land of Canaan, the land that I'm giving you, and I want you to spy out the land. Every single one of those spies were leaders. Were leaders. And so they go and spy out the land, and after 40 days, they return and starting in verse 26, they bring back a word. They bring back a word to the congregation. They find that the land is full of fruit. It, you know, it, they say it flows with milk and honey. You know, it, this great land. But then the report turns. In verse 28, they say, Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites and dwell in the mountains. The Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. And they continue their report in verse 31. And they say, but the men who had gone up with him, with Caleb, said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. All the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Then we saw the giants... The descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we are like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. What a 
report. And isn't it just like us as human beings, us normal people, to see the clouds despite the great things God set before us? Are any of you like me? You know, a lot of times my answer is, yeah, but. I, I, I can see the challenges. I can see the problems. But let, let's look at all the angles. Let, let, let's look at everything. And that's what they were doing. But Caleb there, in verse 30, he quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. I'm sure to the people and to the ten spies, what Caleb said must have seemed like crazy talk. They're like, are you kidding me? There's giants there. We are like grasshoppers. Are you kidding? There are fortified cities there. Okay, like, oh, let's go. We can take it. You know, no problem. We got this. Crazy talk. But in verse 24, God says of Caleb, but my servant Caleb, because he had a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Caleb was crazy because he was different, because he had a different spirit in him. He had a different spirit. There's Caleb and Joshua out of those ten spies would be the only two of those ten spies to return to the promised land. To return. Then we find that return in Joshua 14, verses 6 through 14. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh and the Kenzanite said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. Caleb comes to Joshua and says, you know what God said about us, that we were going to come into the promised land. Verse 7, he says, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren, who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot is trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, he said, these 45 years ever since the Lord spoke his word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old. 85. Isn't that fantastic? But it gets even better. Verse 11, As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Okay, come on. Isn't that just crazy talk? Now, I'm sorry, I know several of you are probably close to 85. There's some of you out there, and if you came up to me and said, Pastor, I'm as strong now as I was when I was 40. I just, yeah, right. It's crazy talk. But Caleb is like, I am as strong now as I was then. And he says, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. He said, now therefore give me this mountain on which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard that in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. 
So Joshua blessed him. Why? There at the bottom of verse 14, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. John, Caleb would go and take the mountain with the giants. Now, now think about this. When Caleb was 40, he was willing to go and take on the giants when he had the armies of Israel. 45 years later, he's 85 years old, and he goes to take on the mountain with the giants with just his family. Yeah. His faith strengthened even more over those 45 years. And he's like, give me the mountain. I want the giants. I don't know about you, but that is just crazy talk. Now, Don, I'm, I'm going to bring you into this. I, I, I hope you don't mind. But when I was in your home a few days ago, you know, a couple weeks ago, you said, you know, you don't think that the Lord will ever put you in another pastorate. But I can't imagine in 10 years you coming up to the Texas Conference president and saying, give me your most difficult district, I'm ready. Right? In another 10 years from now. That's Caleb. That's Caleb. That's crazy. That's crazy. You, you know, somebody went, but, but, but Caleb, you're going to go up that mountain. What if you slip and fall and break your hip? You, you know, what if you twist your knee? You, you know. And the Lord blessed Caleb. And that day, Caleb went out. He, he took the mountain with his family. There was another hillside 1st Samuel 14 we see this story this history of Israel now it happened on that day that Jonathan the son of Saul said to the young man who bore his armor come let us go over to the Philistines garrison that is on the other side but he did not tell his father between the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistine garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. Oh, so Jonathan has rocks on either side of him as he's going down this path. Now, less than a week ago, on uh, Monday, this last Monday, found ourselves at the Garden of the Gods in Colorado Springs. You know, they've got these nice red rocks that stick up out of the earth, and this one rock looked like a, sort of like a, a, a piece of paper sticking up out of the ground into the air. And we stood there and watched two men scale up that paper thin, about as wide as a human body, they scaled up to the top and rappelled down. And we sit there and we're like, you know, a lot, a lot of the kids that were there, like, we're not doing that. <laughs> you can't get us to do that. No way. And what they were doing was crazy. You know, this is Jonathan. Jonathan. And so Jonathan says to his young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. Isn't that something? Jonathan said, Nothing restrains the Lord. Do you believe that today? That nothing restrains the Lord? I think the greatest thing that restrains the Lord is our own thoughts and actions. Because we really don't believe that God can do it. 
And so, verse 7, so his armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. Oh, isn't that something? Here, his armor bearer says to Jonathan, do what's in your heart. And we were just reading, we were reading about Caleb and that he had a different spirit in him. Go then, here I am with you, according to your heart. So Jonathan said, very well. Let us cross over to these men, and when we show ourselves to them, if they say thus to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and not go up to them. But if they say thus, come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has delivered them into our hand, and this will be a sign to us. So what happens? So they showed themselves up to the garrison of the Philistines, and the Philistines said, look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they've been hidden. And the men of the garrison called to Jonathan and his armor bearers and said, Come up to us and we will show you something. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up with me for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up on his hands and knees with his armor bearer after him. Hmm. Hey, I don't know how many of you have ever done some rock climbing, but it exhausts your strength pretty quickly. You know, as you're pulling your own weight, you know, up and, you know, and everything. Before Jonathan starts climbing up the rock, he says to his armor bearer, let's go up. We've got this. God's given it to us. That's crazy. Hey, Jonathan, by the time you get to the top, if they haven't shot you with arrows first, you're going to be so exhausted, you're going to be worth nothing. But it is amazing to me. And he says, and they fell before Jonathan. And as he came after him, his armor bearer killed them. That first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20 men within half an acre of land. John just came up and just started going after him. And it says, So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle shifted to Beth Avon. Crazy talk. We're going to go take on the garrison of the Philistines. Just you and I, let's go. Because God is with us. It's crazy talk, isn't it? But as Seventh-day Adventist, we take great courage in, in these words from Revelation 1-3, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. Isn't that crazy talk? I was reading something this week that said there are fewer and fewer people professing to be Christians in America. It's crazy talk to be talking about the Bible and about prophecy and about Jesus coming again. But we keep doing it. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Paul would tell us in 2 Corinthians 2.14, he said, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Isn't that fantastic? That God wants to use you and I. Flawed, falling, failing human beings. To be his fragrance. To permeate the earth. He wants to use you and I to show the world Jesus Christ. Wow. I don't know about you, but there are some mornings when I wake up and I'm like, Lord, it's crazy talk. You want to use me? 
Lord, my day is not going good, and it isn't even breakfast yet. Lord, you want to use me? That's crazy talk. I mean, some days, you know, I know, it's got to be crazy talk. You know, I was planning on spending, you know, uh, time getting ready for the Sabbath. Yesterday afternoon, I had this great plan. But then a great wind came up out of the east. <laughs> Caught my son's basketball hoop and gently laid it over with a thud through the windshield of our van. Lord, you want me to get ready for the Sabbath? That's crazy talk. <laughs> but God wants to use you and I to reach the world for Him. That's Him. Then the scripture reading says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now God wants to use you and I. He wants to use the fragrance of Jesus Christ to touch our lives, to reach out to those around us. It's crazy talk. If somebody told me I would, we would still be mowing our lawn in Texas, I said, that's crazy talk. But that's what God wants to do in our lives. You're like, oh, Pastor, I can't get up front. It's okay. But maybe God wants you to be up front. He'll do it. He'll make it happen. I, I, I remember being a shy little boy that would hide behind his parents when I met friends. That was me. And, and growing up, if, you know, someone said, well, you're going to be a pastor. Some, I would be like, yeah, that's crazy talk. I mean, my life was planned for me from day one. You know, I had three generations of General Motors employees. I grew up two and a half blocks from the General Motors Engineering Institute. In fact, even after I started to be going down the track of being a pastor, I even had a family member come to me and say, well, that's great. Now you can be a chaplain at a General Motors factory. Being a pastor... That's crazy talk. Even sometimes today, I look at my wife and I'm like, what am I doing? This is crazy. If you would have told me a year ago that we would be baptizing somebody from online, I'm like, that's crazy. That's crazy talk. You know, I'm going to bring this up. I was talking with Kevin Bramlett this week. You know, he's got a desire that our church becomes the online church for people to go and find out about Adventism. Amen. You know, we baptized Cheryl Lynn today. We're praying that it's not the last. 
That's crazy talk. But that's God. Our God is the God of the impossible. And He wants to use you and I. And it's going to sound crazy. And it might be crazy. But He wants to use us. Maybe you're thinking, I don't know how God can use me. I don't know what He can do. In just a couple of weeks, we're going to start the Focused Leaders Weekends. We have two of them coming up. Starting September 30, Friday night and, a, and Sabbath on October 1st and then the next weekend in October. If you haven't signed up yet, sign up for one of those weekends. We're going to go through the process of helping to see how God wants to use each one of us. And there might be some crazy things come out of that weekend. And I'm hoping there are. Because if there are some crazy things, it's telling me that God is wanting to use us in a mighty way. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm hoping that you're willing that God will use you. And that it will be crazy talk. Let's close with our him this morning. Let us stand together as we sing hymn number 625. We'll just do the first and last verse, number 625, Higher Ground. Thank you. 